Hey, what's up, everybody? Good to be back with you here again. We got the Indians and the White Sox. The Indians are up there in the pennant race. They are 12 and 6, and right behind the Yankees, I think one game behind, if I remember right. And uh, here is Ken Keltner, who takes a ball for Cleveland and hits one deep to left field. And out of here, over the head of Zerniel for a home run on the second pitch of the game there from Randy Gumpert, and it's one nothing Cleveland just like that. Lou Boudreau takes a ball inside and uh, pops one up foul. 1-1 the count. Boudreau hitting 4-12, has the uh, highest average in the uh, major leagues, and hits that one in the left field for a base hit. Here comes Mickey Vernon. So the Indians are uh, pushing hard here already, and uh, Vernon bunts one over to Gumpert, whose only play is a first base that moves Boudreau up to uh, second. Here is uh, Larry Doby. Larry Doby up there, hitting 253, takes a ball, low and away, 1 0 the count. And uh, there's a pitch that misses. It's ball two. It's 2 0 here on Doby, and that's inside for ball, ball three, 3 0 pitch in there, and there's ball four, and Gumpert lost him, and that will bring up Bob Kennedy. And uh, we have, we're not even a minute into this game yet, and it's already all Cleveland all the time. Kennedy takes a strike, 0 1 the count. And there's a swing on that one, 2 0 2. Now the count on him, and he fouls one off, still 0 2, just staying alive. And there's a little bunt, swinging bunt rather, over to first base. Goldberg grabs it, takes it to the bag himself, then moves up both Boudreau and Doby. And with two outs, here is Joe Gordon. Joe Gordon hits one over to uh, the right side. Michaels has it, throws over to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Uh, Chicago barely able to get out of that one, and here's Don Wheeler hitting 340, who uh, swings and misses at one and then takes a strike, 0 oh, 2, the count on him. And there's a ball outside, 1 and 2 now, the count on Wheeler. And uh, 2 and 2 as he barely um, ad- avoided swinging at that. Then he hits the next ball over there to a Larry Doby in center field for the first out that brings up Gordon Goldsbury. Goldsbury takes a ball, 1 and 0, the count on him. And there's a ground ball over to Gordon at second base. Throws the first for the out, two away. And here's Gus Zerniel. He takes a ball on, or a strike rather, on the outside corner. Then a ball, there it is, on the outside. And hits a ground ball over to Joe Gordon. His second throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the second inning. It's going to be Dale Mitchell here against Randy Gumpert, who fouls off two straight pitches. 0-2 oh, the count. There's a ball inside, 1-2, and two, and he hits one over to center field. And um, that's a base hit for Mitchell, and that'll bring up Jim Hegan with the runner on at first base. Hegan hitting 200. He hits a little ground ball over there to a Michaels. His only play is at first base, and he barely gets Hegan at first, and that puts Mitchell up to second. And here is Early Wynn, who hits a fly ball straight over to Philly in right field for the second out. Here's Ken Keltner again. And uh, his uh, home run in the first is the difference in this game so far. 2-0 the count to Keltner, now 2-1 and one after that strike. He hits one over to Adams in center field for the third out. We go to the bottom in the second, and here comes Herb Adams. And um, he hits one that goes just by Early Wynn over to Lou Boudreau, the shortstop who throws the first for the out, one away here in the bottom of the second. Cass Michaels takes a ball. And another ball, 2-0 oh, the count now on Michaels. And there's one outside. It's 3-0 and oh on Cass. And there's a strike in the inner half. It's 3-1. And, one. and uh, he lays off of that pitch and will walk. And that'll bring up Floyd Baker now with Michaels on at first base. And Baker takes the strike. 0-1 oh, the count. He hammers one wide at first and foul. 0-2 oh, now. There's a ball on the inside corner of the plate. 1-2 and two the count. And there's a bouncer up the middle. Joe Gordon has it, and he uh, flips it over to Boudreau for one, and they are not able to get the relay at first. And so Baker, now the runner at first base. Luke Appling hitting only 198, swings and misses a one, and then uh, looks at a ball high, one and one the count. There's a throw to first, nothing doing, and there's another one high, two and one the count now on Luke. Three and one is Appling with a good eye, and then he swings and misses at that one, full count now on him. And there's a ground ball over the bag of third base for a base hit, and Baker has a chance to score here, and is he going to tie this game? And he is called safe at the plate after that throw from Mitchell, and Appling hits uh, second base there on that double. And on the first base hit that they've had of the game, the White Sox are able to uh, tie this game at one each. And uh, look at this. Uh, so early win deciding to uh, walk Philly intentionally to get to Randy Gumper, the uh, pitcher who's hitting 308. There's a ball on him and another ball, 2-0 oh, the count now on Gumper. And there's a swing and a miss of the fastball for a strike, 2-1 and one the count. And there's another strike in there. It's 2-2. Two and two. And that's in the dirt, but Gumper goes after it, swings and misses. We go to the top of the third, and here again is Lou Boudreau. It's a fly ball over to Philly in right field for the first out, and that'll bring up Mickey Vernon, one away, and he takes a strike, 0-1 one, oh, one the count. There's one that's fouled back. It's 0-2 oh, now on Mickey. And there's a pop-up wide of third base now to play, still 0-2, oh, and, and there's a hard ground ball into the hole of the right side, and it's going to be Goldsbury who grabs it, and uh, does he do it himself? No, he flips over to Gumper covering for the out. Two away, Larry Doby now takes the ball low. And then swing and a miss on that one. One and one the count now on Larry. Here's a ball in the outside corner, two and one. And there's a slider too low. It's a three and one count now on Doby. And he fouls one off. Full count now on Larry. And he fouls another one off. Count remains full. And it is still full. 
And uh, there's a foul tip into Wheeler's mitt, and that's strike three, and that'll take us to the bottom of the third inning. Don Wheeler up there now takes a strike. Owen won the count on him, and he smashes one over to second base, but Joe Gordon is able to jump up and catch it for the first out. Go- Gordon Goldsbury now takes a the ball, then hits a, a one-hopper over to second base. Gordon has it, throws the first four, the out two away, and it's Gus Zerniel again who takes a strike. Owen won the count. It fouls one away. It's 0-2. 0-2 the count now on Zerniel, and he swings and misses of that one and strikes out. We go to the top of the fourth inning. It's Bob Kennedy who takes a strike. 0-1 the count. And there's a slider that misses. 1-1 and the count now, and that's fouled away. 1-2 and two now on Kennedy. There's a line shot over the left field, and Zerniel is able to block that like a hockey goalie with his body. Uh, Bob Kennedy ends up at uh, first base. That brings up Joe Gordon now. Gordon hitting 317 now, and uh, he takes a ball. And there's a slider wide, 2 and no the count now on him. And uh, 3-0 and is that uh, pitch midst, and there's ball four around the knees, and uh, he'll take his base. That'll bring up Dale Mitchell here. Runners on at first and second for the uh, Indians, and he swings and fouls one off. Owen won the count. There's a little ground ball down the third phase base line, and Gumpert has it, and uh, he makes the play over to Baker, and they force uh, out the lead runner, Kennedy, and so now there's one out with uh, Gordon and Mitchell on first and uh, second base, and here's Jim Hegan who takes the ball. Oh, one and oh the count. There's another ball high, two and oh the count. There's a strike down the heart of the play, two and one. Three and one is that one just missed from Gumpert, and uh, he misses again, and that will uh, walk Hegan and load the bases here for early win. And there's a strike in the outside corner, oh and one the count. That one missed low. It's one and one on win. And he hits one over to third base, and uh, it's Baker making the play, throws over to Michaels for one, and then on to Goldsbury at first for the double play, and we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, and this will be Herb Adams again for the White Sox. He hits one over there to the uh, gap in left center field, and that one gets in there behind the outfielders, and Adams winds up on second base for a double. That'll bring up Cass Michaels now with a go-ahead run on second base here, bottom of the fourth inning. Michaels takes a strike. And then hits the little ground ball down to Joel Gordon at uh, second base. His only plays at first, and he takes it. And uh, Adams, meanwhile, moves up to third with only one out. And here is uh, Floyd Baker, not much of a bunter, so we will swing away with him. And uh, there's a strike on the corner. Oh, and won the count now on Baker. That one is too high. One and won the count on him, and he hits one deep in the left field. Mitchell has it, and uh, that is deep enough to score the go-ahead run for the White Sox. That's what we wanted to have happen. Luke, Luke Appling now, and he hits one that goes off of the glove of Kellner, the third baseman, into a left field. Appling able to make second base there on that uh, double, and um, here is Dave Philly. And he is walked again. Second time that Philly has been walked intentionally in this game to bring up Randy Gumper with two outs. And so here is Gumpert hitting now 286 in his uh, little collection of at-bats. And he has a ground ball over to uh, Joel Gordon, who makes the play and throws the first for the out. So the uh, Indian strategy has worked so far, but they are down uh, two and two to one in this game so far. Ken Keltner takes a ball and then a strike. One and one the count now on Ken. Screwball's just high. It's two and one now. And there's another screwball that misses. Three and one. Full count now, as that was a strike. And the count does remain full. And he fouls another one away. Full count still on him. And there's a breaking ball in there for strike three. One away. And here is Lou Boudreau. There's a smash up the middle. And uh, it's Appling, the uh, shortstop who has it. Makes a great play on that one. Throws over to first for the out. Two away. And that brings up Mickey Vernon. And uh, that's a uh, ball in there to Vernon. One and no the count. There's a strike in there to him. One and one now the count on Mickey. And there's one hit into the left side for a base hit. And that'll bring up Larry Doby as Vernon takes his base at first. And Doby hits one deep, deep, deep to right field. And that one is over everybody's head and out of this ballpark for a home run. And, you know, I've talked before about Comiskey Park in 1949, especially after they moved the fences back. Not much of a home run hitter's park. But uh, the Indians uh, apparently didn't catch the memo. There's a ball to Bob Kennedy. And then he hits a ground ball over to uh, Cass Michaels at second base, makes a play and throws to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 3-2 to two by Cleveland. Don Wheeler up there takes a the ball and another ball. 2-0 oh, the count on him. And there's a fastball inside that misses. It's 3-0, and and that one's in tight. And so early win gets the benefit of the home run and then promptly walks the first batter he sees. Up comes Gordon Goldsbury, who takes a strike. 0-1 oh, the count. And uh, the count remains 0-1. Oh, there is a ball wide. 1-1 one one now the count on Gordon. And that's fouled straight back. It's 1-2 and two now on Gordon Goldsbury. And uh, that's high for a ball, 2-2. Two and two. There's a swing and tap foul tip, but uh, Hegan can't hold on. It remains two and two. And there's a ground ball over to Boudreau. Flips over to Gordon for one, and that's all they get. And so Goldsbury now on first base, and here is Gus Zerniel. One and oh, the count on him. And there's a ground ball into the hole in the uh, left side. Keltner um, is able to uh, stop it, but has no throw. 
And uh, boy, I tell you, this a little bit of that critical play-by-play here because um, really, as the uh, uh, play-by-play was telling us, Keltner really should have made that play and should have thrown it somewhere, and instead he just ate that ball. And so that is going to wind up being um, an infield hit here for uh, Chicago. And uh, that puts runners here on first and second base with only one out, and it is Herb Adams coming up. And uh, there's a ball in there to Adams. Want to know the count? Hitting 345 and hits one deep to center field. Dobie's there for the for it and gets the out two away. And here comes Cass Michaels. Michaels takes the strike. Owen won the count. And there's a line or a ground ball rather back to win. He stabs it and he throws over to first for the out. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Still three to two Indians. Joe Gordon up there takes a ball. And another ball, 2-0 oh, the count now on Gordon, and he hits one deep to left field, and it's another home run for the Indians, and they're up 4-2 to two now. As I said, don't tell me this isn't a home run hitter's ballpark. Ball one here to Dale Mitchell, and then he hits one over to Adams in center field for the first out, one away. Jim Hegan now. He hits one over to uh, the uh, third base side, but um, Gumpert able to go over and grab that one. Fires over to first base for the out. There's two away, and here's early win again. Takes a ball. Win over 2 today. 1-1 one one the count now on him, and that's wide. 2-1 and one now the count on win. And they went around on that one. It's two and two. That's hit to right center field, and there's nobody there. Philly only able to knock that ball down, but is only able to temporarily slow it down. He ends up uh, coasting into uh, third base with a triple early win, that is. And um, I'm going to do a really quick check here on his batting statistics, and I am correct in saying this. This is one of these where an early win had um, no actual uh, double or triples in real life and has managed to get a triple here in this replay. So how about that? Isn't that interesting? Is that what you expected? Probably not. And uh, so there you have it. It's going to take me just a second to um, make sure that um, I get this one uh, marked off correct. Let's see here. All right, let's see here. There are a lot of uh, files I have here in this folder, which makes this um, a little bit uh, cumbersome for me to uh, keep track of. Um, yeah, we the problem that we have is that we have to do a lot more blog writing than we've been doing. I have blog posts that are going out for about two months now, but um, we still need to do a little bit more. Up now, back to the game comes Ken Keltner, and uh, he hits a little comebacker over to uh, Gumpert, who uh, throws over to first for the out, and that does it. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, but early win with that triple. Wow. Floyd Baker up there takes a ball and then fouls one back. One and one the count on him. And there's one foul back again. It's one and two. It's, it's a ball in the dirt. Two and two the count. There's one low and away. Full count now on Baker. And that's in too tight. And he takes the walk. And that brings up Luke Appling, who's two for two today. And he hits a bouncer through the right side for a base hit. Appling's still perfect. We'll be three for three. And uh, down by two, we are not going to run the um, uh, slow of foot Baker. And here comes Dave Philly for the first time today, in which he will not be... Um, past and he hits one deep down the left field line and that one is just foul that's one of these um, examples of good uh, play-by-play in diamond mind where um it's really really sort of tense and you think that you know what it's going to be and then at the last second they say no that's a foul ball and uh that's uh, the sort of uh, play-by-play that we really really like to see this court sort that um creates a whole lot of tension for you, especially in this part of the ball game, because if that's a fair ball, then this is a tie ball game. Um, Owen won the count now on Dave Philly, and he hits a little ground ball over towards Gordon at second base. Flips over to Boudreaux for one, then on to first for the double play as uh, Baker moves up to a third. And that brings up Randy Gumpert. Now Gumpert um, only thrown 83 pitches. We're going to keep him in this game. Um, 0 for 2 today, and he uh, fouls one back. Owen won the count. And there's a called strike in there. It's 0 and 2 now on Randy. And that's up and in for a ball. One and two, the count now on Gumpert. And there's a slider low, two and two, the count on him. And there's strike three called, and he knew it, and there's nothing he could do about it. And we go to the top of the seventh inning, and here comes Lou Boudreau, one for three today. Hits one over there to uh, Baker at the uh, third base, throws to first for the out, one away is Mickey Vernon. There's a ball and low to Vernon, one and oh, the count. There's low and inside. It's two and oh now on Mickey. Two oh pitch comes in, and that's fouled out and uh, away now to play, two and one, and that's fouled back, two and two, the count now on Vernon. And there's one inside for a ball. It's a full count now on Mickey. That's foul back. Count remains full, and that one just misses, and uh, Gumpert has given up another walk, and here goes Vernon down to first base, and here comes uh, Larry Doby. There's a ball down and in to Doby. 1-0 the count on him, and that slider missed. 2-0 now the count on Larry, and there's another one that misses. It's a 3-0 count on him, and there's ball four. Maybe I should have taken Gumpert out after all, huh? What do you think? Here comes Bob Kennedy, runners on first and second. There's a strike in there to Kennedy. 0-1 the count, and that's outside. 1-1 the count on him now. 
There's a double play ball over to third base, and uh, if we go around the horn successfully, it's Baker to Michaels and then on to Goldsbury for the twin killing. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Here again is Don Wheeler, the catcher. Not always a good sign when your catcher's hitting leadoff. Wheeler fouls one back and then takes the ball, one and one the count on him. And there's a high fly ball over to right center. Bob Kennedy there for the out, one away, and here's Gordon Goldsbury who takes the ball. 1-0 the count, and um, that's another one low. 2-0 and now in Goldsbury. That's fouled back, 2-1 and one the count. Swung on a miss, 2-2. Two and two. There's a ball in low that misses. Full count on uh, Gordon, and uh, he stays up there. And uh, there's one that's wide, and that's walk number 6 given up by Wynn, and that'll bring up uh, Zerniel. Wynn giving up a lot of walks this season compared to what he did in real life. There's a strike in there to Zerniel. 0-1 oh, the count now. And uh, the next uh, pitch, another throw to first base, nothing happening. And there's one belted straight to center field, but it's an airport out there, and Larry Doby has the uh, ball out there for the catch, and there's two away. Herb Adams now takes the ball, change up, and then hits one over to left field, and uh, Mitchell has it for the out. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Randy Gumpert somehow still in there despite giving up those three home runs, and here's Joe Gordon, and uh, the count on Gordon now 1-1. Screwball is just inside two and one the count now. And there's a ground ball over towards Michaels, the second baseman. Makes the play throw to first for the out. One away. And here's Dale Mitchell, who takes the ball high. And there's a ground ball over first base. Goldsbury grabs it and does it himself. Two away. And that'll bring up Jim Hegan. And uh, there's a ball off the plate to Hegan. One and know the count. There's one fell straight back. One and one the count now. Swinging a miss on the screwball. It's one and two. Here's one inside for a ball. Two and two the count now on Hegan. And uh, he lines that one back straight up through the middle for a base head. And that'll bring up early win. Win uh, takes a, a screwball in there for a strike, and there's one low. One and one the count now on Win, and that's fouled back. It's one and two now here on Win. And there's a line drive down the right field line that's just foul, still one and two. And there's a fly ball over to Philly in right field. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and here comes Cass Michaels for the White Sox. The White Sox running out of outs. Michaels fouls one back to the left side, takes the ball high. One and one the count now on him. There's a ground ball down to Keltner at third base, makes the play throws to first for the out. One away. Floyd Baker takes the ball inside. One and know the pitch. One and one now as he takes a strike. That's foul back. One and two on Baker now, and he hits one over to uh, right field. Bob Kennedy there for the out. Two away. Luke Appling uh, swings and fouls that one back. Oh, and one the count, and there's a ball on him. One and one now on Luke, and he hits one between third and short for a base hit, and the game's decided that Luke Appling needs to start getting his base hits. He's four for four so far. This will bring up Dave Philly. Philly up there um, hits one over to second base. Joe Gordon has it for the um, – and throws over to first base, rather, for the out. We uh, go to the top of the ninth inning, and it's going to be Ken, Ken uh, Keltner. And uh, Keltner hits one over to uh, center field. And uh, Adams unable to get to that one well, and Keltner starts racing around the bases, and he will wind up at third base with a triple, his second of the uh, year, and uh, compared to two in real life, too, by the way. That'll bring up Lou Boudreau with a runner on the third base. White Sox will have the run, uh, the uh, infield back, and uh, Boudreau takes a ball and another ball, two, and no, the count now on Lou. There's ball three in there close with the screw ball, and there's a fastball in there for a strike three and one now on Boudreau. That one's outside, no question about it. Gumpert has given up his sixth walk today, and here comes Mickey Vernon. And uh, there's a ball inside to Vernon, 1-0 and the count on him, and there's a screwball off the plate, 2-0. and There's a, finally a strike in there, 2-1. and There's one that misses high and away, 3-1 and the count, and he misses with the slider again. That is walk number 7, and that's going to be it for Gumpert. I'm not going to be able to watch much more of this. Clyde Schoen is going to be the pitcher here for the uh, White Sox, and we'll go ahead and just keep him in that number 9 spot. We might as well. Bases loaded here. Larry Doby comes up. Only a two-run lead for Cleveland, but that might not last long. Doby fouls one off and then um, watches the ball. One and one the count. There's a breaking ball high. It's two and one on Larry, and that falls outside the strike zone. And uh, Doby then uh, swings and misses at that one, so it's a full count now on him. And there's a swing and a miss, and Doby strikes out. Shown in his first um, appearance this season gets a strikeout. And uh, here comes Bob Kennedy. Base is still loaded. The uh, White Sox need a double play here. There's a ball and another ball in Kennedy, 2-0 oh the count, and there's one over to left center field that gets right between Adams and Zerniel. And uh, here comes the throw home after two score, and uh, that is very, very poor th- um, relay throw by Appling, and that goes over everyone's head. Bob Kennedy, the uh, batter, ends up taking third base, and that clears the bases. It is 7-2. to 7-2 to two now, Indians, and here comes Joe Gordon, who takes the ball, 1-0 oh the count, and there's a ground ball over to the second baseman, Michaels, and I hit the wrong uh, button, and I had him throw home instead of to first base. Well, they get the runner, Kennedy trying to score. Joe Gordon will be on first base now with two outs. That was a mistake on my part. Apologies, hit the wrong button. Dale Mitchell now, and he sees a ball and then fouls one back, one and one the count, and that's one inside for a ball, two and one the count. There's one hit um, over to the right side for a base hit. Joe Gordon will hold at second base as Mitchell takes first. 
that brings up Jim Hegan. Hegan takes a uh, ball high, 1-0 and the count, and fouls one back. It's 1-1 one one now here in Hegan. And there's one hidden to the right side, and Michaels grabs that one and throws over to first base for the out, and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Now there's a five-run deficit. You know, it could happen. We saw just the other day the uh, New York Giants overcome one, but um, the Chicago White Sox 1949 are not quite the 49 Giants. Earl Rapp, now the pinch hitter for the White Sox, and he fouls two balls straight back, 0-2 oh, the count. There's one that just misses, 1-2. and two. Two and two as that one was too far inside. There's one hit into the air, but out of play. Two and two, the count remains. There's a, a little ground ball over uh, to Vern in the first baseman who flips over to early win for the first out. Here comes Don Wheeler. Swings and fouls back the first fastball he sees. 0 and 1 the count, and he's jammed inside. But he went around. It's 0 and 2, and he hits one over to right field. Kennedy has it for the out, two away. That'll bring up Goldsbury, who swings and misses at a strike. 0 and 1 the count. There's a ball in tight, 1 and 1. That's high and inside, and that's another ball, two and one the count. And there's a little line drive over the head of Vernon, um, the first baseman, for a base hit. That'll bring up Zerniel, only the seventh hit of the ballgame for the White Sox. Zerniel then takes the strike, hits one over to left center field, and uh, this one gets between the outfielders, and we're going to send Goldsberry home, and he scores standing up. And so the White Sox have one back here with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. It's seven to three Indians. They'll bring up Herb Adams, who takes the ball outside, one and zero the count. It's ripped into left center field for a base hit, and that will score Zerniel. That forces the pitching change as early wind comes out of there. It's 7-4 to four now. Cass Michaels up there. Can it happen? Will the miracle happen is the big question. And there's a swing and a miss by Michaels. 0-1 oh, the count. And there's a ball high to him. It's 1-1. One one. There's a little ground ball over to Lou Boudreau. Flips over to Gordon for the force out at second base, and that does it for this game. So the Indians do end up winning. They win 7-4 to four at the end of this one, and um, this is a vital game for them. We'll see what happens with the Yankees. Do they play today? They do not play today. So... I believe the lead goes down to a half game now for New York, if I remember things right. And uh, this is a little bit exciting, a little bit tense. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and um, I will talk with you uh, again tomorrow. Bye-bye.